not everything works out the way we expect, especially in 3D printing or upgrading your 3D printer. But more about that in a bit. Well, a few months ago, I looked over some Bamboo P1S upgrades from Big Tree Tech, and there was a lot of things going on in that video. I upgraded just about everything from the inside to the outside. After that video, well, they reached out again and asked if I'd be interested in looking over some new things that came out at about the same time as that video. First, to recap and review, let's start with my biggest upgrading concern last time, and also the biggest cosmetic upgrade, the panda fur. Wrapping my P1S with this vinyl, not fur, wrap <laughs> was kind of a pain. The instructions were clear, and they even had a 3D printable part to help you out with cutting things, and I fully admit I rushed things, and this was just after I'd been in a car wreck, and bending and stretching were literally a pain in the neck. Well, other than a few misplaced cuts in the wrap, not me, I had everything on, and I think it looks pretty good, you know, it looks nice. I mean, I'm not a fan of orange colors, but, you know, it works. And it's different. Orange? No. Now for what's really a great upgrade. The Panda Lux LED kit on the inside. My time lapses look a whole lot better when they work, but that's a whole nother issue not related to the Panda Lux. The light kit integrates perfectly into my main controller for the P1S and also works great with the Panda Touch screen that I've actually been using for a few months. And since the Panda Touch uses my only internal USB, they also have a Panda USB hub that, well, it works just like a USB hub is supposed to work. Another big upgrade to the inside was the Panda Jet cooling fan duct, and it's been really cool addition to my setup. <laughs> was that a dad joke? I think it might be helping. I mean, I didn't have any cooling problems before this, but can definitely feel the air coming out on both sides instead of just that default one side, and that's got to be a good thing, you know, for filaments that need quick cooling. Speaking of that cooling and printing and stuff like that, it brings me to what was my biggest disappointment with the upgrades I installed for that last video. Enter the Panda Revo High Flow Hot End. It's a 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle that's supposed to allow you to print up to 37 and a half percent faster than the original nozzle. Now, I did try a number of different high-speed filaments and never had any issues with print quality. But after a couple of months, I ran into what was probably my first problem, the nozzle being made out of brass. Since my P1S came with a hardened steel nozzle, I really never worried about different filament types. At least not until I needed to use a little bit of my black carbon fiber and Bamboo Studio wouldn't let me. And then one day, printing with some plain old PLA on my P1S, I heard a noise. You know, a noise. <laughs> I rushed to the P1S and saw a bird's nest of filament. And along with that, I saw a blob of some weird colored stuff poking out of it. Well, I had to melt that blob apart to get to the color stuff and turned out to be that red silicone ring that goes around the nozzle. And I also noticed that the silicone sock itself was ripped down one side completely and was barely hanging on. I pushed on as best as I could and immediately sent an email to Big Tree Tech Tech Support. The first thing they wanted to know was what my order number was. Well, I wanted to see how things would go so I could tell y'all, and so I explained that I was testing things for them, but wanted to just see how customer support worked. They asked for pictures, and this is what I sent them. After they got my email, their reply was that the silicone was just there so I wouldn't burn my fingers if I touched it. And that was it. That was the whole email. Nothing else. So, I kind of let it go for now. I made sure the sock was on there as good as possible and decided to keep on printing. Wrong answer. The very next print, guess what happened? This is what I removed from that Revo nozzle. And it only took about 15 minutes of heating and pulling and heating and pulling. I wish I had video or pics of all of that, but honestly, I was so frustrated and working on a project that I just got to work and did it. Finally got it removed from the nozzle and I got everything cleaned up. But then, nothing. Nothing would go through the nozzle. So I pulled it all apart. 
twice. Oh, and when I put it all back together, you probably already guessed that I put my original bamboo nozzle back on there. Hardened steel and all. Why am I not surprised? Did the Revo nozzle work great right off the bat and even for a few months? Yes, but I'm pretty disappointed in the customer service on it and really even more disappointed in all the downtime I had. And I don't even want to imagine if it was someone that didn't know how to take everything apart like I do. Well, I have one more item for you to close out this follow-up to all the previous upgrades. And since I kind of hate to leave things on a low point, I now get to tell you about my absolute favorite, must-have, absolutely recommended upgrade from Big Tree Tech. Never hurts to employ a little hyperbole. The Panda Double Cryo Grip Build Plate. I'm not joking when I say that this one upgrade was really worth going through everything else. My prints stick to that plate like I laid down an entire can of Aquanet and a stick of glue. And that's with absolutely no heating on that plate. Along with that, I've had a noticeable reduction in corner lifting on prints, and the only thing I've done to clean it is wipe it down thoroughly with a dry microfiber cloth. And really, the only problem I've had with it is when I forgot to change the settings in Bamboo Studio to a cool plate. Even then, I think I only had one failure out of the more than few times I forgot. In case you missed it though, yeah, I love this build plate. Like I said when I started this video, Big Tree Tech reached out again and asked if I'd like to check out a few more upgrades. And since most of the previous ones were pretty cool, I thought you all might be interested as well. The first thing I pulled out of the box was this Panda PWR Intelligent Power Management Module. It allows you to have remote control access to your power supply, not only for your printer, but for some other things that you might have attached. And being a smart controller, it actually has firmware updating. You can control it and update it all by going straight into a web page, similar to controlling your internet router if you're familiar with all of that. And the instructions are pretty clear on how this all works, so it is actually pretty easy to get going. You can control up to 10 Panda power units with a single Panda touch. I only have one power unit and just one P1S, but just like the Panda Touch, I can only imagine how incredible that type of control could be for someone running a small or large print farm. More control, more power. More power, Mr. Silicon. The next thing I tried out was the Panda Branch, and once again, more power. Along with that power, some pretty advanced features for such a little device. First, you'll need to do some 3D printing. It does allow you to customize that color if you want. And I'll put a download link in the description along with their wiki page. After 3D printing, next is cleaning the print, installing the branch into it, screwing everything together, and then attaching it to the back of your printer. For my P1S, I had to remove the external spool adapter, but it just attaches to the print after you're done and it all just tightens back down. I may not like the additional space that it adds to it if I ever put the printer against the wall, but you know, for now, that's not really a problem. Speaking of problems though, I saw online that a number of people complained about the screws that hold it together. They're just a little bit too short. I didn't have a problem with it and I just moved right along, at least until I started plugging in stuff. Then the top of the 3D printed part kind of popped open, even though it was screwed down. So I tightened that screw a little bit, but it never really kind of got tight again. So be careful when you're putting it all together and you shouldn't have a problem. The next thing to do with your branch is to get power to it. And oddly enough, for some reason, I either didn't remember this or maybe I didn't know this, but it's powered by your AMS connection. There are five AMS connections on the branch to allow for a max total of four AMSs but the top one is only for power in, coming from the P1S, and that required a little reconfiguring of my AMS cables and things, but it's not too bad, and when I put it back in its normal spot on the table, it shouldn't be too noticeable. Putting together a 3D printer with a door like this one, for some reason, has always been a little traumatic. Well, at least it has been ever since I saw Uncle Jesse putting together the Creality K1 and doing this. Whoa. 
So I was really excited to check out this next item and don't fall out or anything over the name. I mean, Panda Fur, Panda Power, Panda Lux, Panda Branch. I mean, this has to have an absolutely cool panda name, right? Introducing the Panda Door. Yep, Door. Think somebody put a little too much effort into the other names, right? What are you trying to say? Also, I'll have a link to the wiki page in the description with everything else, but you may want to skip that one. And to save you some time, here is the page. Seriously though, this thing has some really impressive specs. The first thing on the webpage says that it's made from polycarbonate and that it's unbreakable and has superior impact resistance. Now, if this works, maybe Elon Musk should install it on the Cybertruck. Sure. Yeah. There are three colors that will fit your mood or your fur, and they're called Dark Crystal, Sunburst Orange, and Citrus Splash. For me though, those are better known as Dark Smoky Gray, Orange, and Yellow. I very thankfully got the Dark Gray, you know, since I'm not really a fan of orange, excluding my present P1S. And since I shouldn't be able to break anything, I thought I'd go ahead here and install it right now. All right, first look at it. They talk about the corners and the border and everything, about how well that's made. And uh, I'll be honest, looks really good. Let's get this installed. Well, that's just about it. And other than installing those little rubber grommets under the screws, especially on the handle, it uh, went pretty smooth. Now I think I have, yeah, I got a little bit of issue with my panda fur. Again, that was my fault. But other than that, I mean, everything shuts perfectly. It looks good, actually looks pretty much the same as my original door. This one isn't actually a necessary upgrade, but Maybe if they had done it in dark red. Now, that might be a game changer. Ooh, man, that looks good. Thanks again to Big Tree Tech for allowing me to take a look at their upgrades and tell all of you about it. And these upgrades, just so you know, for your bamboo printers, well, there are some that are really awesome and some that are just for fun. <laughs> and other than my issues with the Revo nozzle, I'm actually pretty impressed with all of them. Will you need any of these upgrades? If you're a casual one or two printer owner, well, probably not. But if you have at least a couple of the same printer, especially an X1 or a P1 series machine, then I would say a number of these upgrades could really be a significant help to you and your workflow. Now, my favorite of all of these, it still has to be the cryo build plate. I'm definitely going to be watching out for some holiday deals on that one. Did something in these upgrades stand out to you? Do you have a favorite? Or have you tried any of these upgrades? If so, let us know in the comments. Helping each other out, well, it's one of the best parts of the 3D printing lab as we all learn, create, and amaze.